Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for your Cancer New Moon Deep Dive video. Now, I am launching this a little later because I have changed residencies since the last one. So thank you for bearing with me. So we have this event, which occurs on the 10th of July at 2.16 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. And the Ascendant is in the bright and bubbly sign of Gemini and it's conjunct the part of fortune but also uh, the north node so that's a really lovely ascendant but of course the sun and the moon the moon's in its home zone in the sign of cancer so it's its most favored new moon in a way uh, as far as the moon's perspective is concerned and it's very much about where we live who we live with and how. So isn't it remarkable that we've changed our residency uh, during this cycle. So please stay with me as I explore what the Cancer New Moon presents, but also share with you the planetary positions of the other influences in train at the time of the event, and therefore what we can expect over the next month. And then I will share the uh, forecast for each of the 12 zodiac signs. Now, before I go further, I would be so grateful if you'd subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot every time somebody does subscribe. Every time I drop a video, you'll get an alert. So please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. And of course, if you want to go beyond your zodiac sign or your ascendant, find out much more about what makes you tick at a personal level, then that comes through Serious Astrology and my package of a 12 month forecast and a character analysis based on your time, date and place of birth, totally unique to you, can give you searing insights into the opportunities ahead. And there is 30% off with a special offer. Please see the link below. Now on the screen, you can see that the sun on this event, along with the moon, is at 18 degrees in Cancer and one minute. But what's really going to define this particular event is the role of Uranus. Uranus is the planet of freedom, the planet of truth. It's not at its best in the sign of Taurus, known as being in its full. But in this particular chart, it's in the 12th house. The 12th house points very much to secrets, uh, things that are, are yet to emerge. There can be things that we want to keep confidential. But Uranus being that truth seeker suggests in the 12th house, we're being pushed to dive deep ourselves to understand what does make us tick, but perhaps by taking some more innovative approaches because that's what Uranus is all about. Now, of course, the sun and the moon in Cancer is very much about feeling comfortable in our environment. The moon is a watery influence, but this is a cardinal sign. So it's one of the four leaders. So it's about initiation. So if you're not feeling particularly settled in your emotional life or where you live, or in your close relationships. I think what Uranus in its sextile to the sun and the moon is saying is be open-minded about how you can open up new ways of looking at things. But ironically, Uranus is not just forging that generally very positive link to the sun and the moon. It's also in a square to the combination between Venus and Mars in the glorious sign of Leo. Now, ironically, in this particular event chart, which is based on Greenwich, now they're in the fourth house, which is very redolent of where we live and that more homey type of feel. And Venus conjunct Mars is without doubt uh, an aspect that gives us potentially a desire, a desire to get what we want. So if you are living somewhere or you're with someone where your needs are not being met, then that combination can create that extra desire. But because of the clash with Uranus, it may mean that something has to change in order to get that greater sense of tranquility, greater sense of peace and comfort in our home situations. Now also at the top of this chart in the 10th house, we can see there is Saturn. Now Saturn is no longer in an exact square with Uranus within three degrees. That came to a close last week on the 7th of July. But this position of Saturn 
is broadly still in, in a square with Uranus, but opposing Venus and Mars. So Saturn in that 10th house is about our responsibilities and obligations. So if we want to go for what we want in terms of the base part of our existence, it may mean that we have to make sacrifices, take on greater responsibility, work harder, which then can take us away from the comfort of our abode, or spending time in nature and seeking out peace and tranquility, which is what the new moon in Cancer is particularly important around. So you can see that Uranus can be an influence that is very radical in a positive way in its angle to the sun and the moon, but more challenging in its angle to uh, the combination between Venus and Mars in Leo and their opposition to Saturn. So we have a T-square. So how will this play out for each of the zodiac signs? Well, for you, Aries, I do feel that this is a, a, a chart which gives you the chance to explore your talents and maybe it's through your creativity that you can change your home environment. So for example, this could see some Aries people thinking very carefully about working from home. And that can be something that can be very good for you because for you, Uranus is in your second house of resources and the moon and the sun combination, the new moon are in your fourth house and uh, Venus and Mars are in your fifth house. So you can actually use your ingenuity to improve that home environment and working from home or having a couple of different part-time jobs to work around your family life can be something that works very well with you with this chart. Because Saturn, however, is in your sector of friendships and your long-term future, it's possible that in order to get what you want in terms of the base part of your existence, you may have to give up a little bit of time in playful interaction. So that could leave you feeling a little bit compromised, perhaps even a little bit dissatisfied in some ways. But I think essentially over the next month, trying to create a greater sense of calm, peacefulness and security really should be your main aim. And therefore, if there is a little bit of a limitation in the time you have to go out and play, uh, then that is something that perhaps you're going to have to toggle and pivot towards in order to make the most of this new moon energy. Now, Taurus, for you, the new moon occurs in your third house, which is very much about quick decisions, using your mind. Quite ironic, isn't it, with the moon, because the moon's very much about feelings. But you can make this work for you, because any ideas that you're developing or conversations you're having, make sure they're meaningful as far as how you feel. That's going to be the critical factor for you. Now, because you do have Venus and Mars in your fourth house of the home and family, but Uranus is in your sign, your ideas that you're developing, if someone close to you tends to be a bit of a wet blanket or lacks enthusiasm for what you're trying to feel excited about, I think that actually could be very frustrating for you. And you need people at the moment to get behind you with what you're trying to change. And if there's something that is changing in your world and it's being refreshed, you're wanting to welcome this because you're a sign that generally sticks with the status quo. So if you are then go in for a new beginning or trying some different approaches. If you've got someone coming along and pouring uh, the proverbial cold water over your idea, it could really spark your frustration almost straight away. So I would say that balancing what you need for you in terms of that creativity, feeling that you're a free spirit and keeping everyone happy in your home or family life may mean that you have to push back a little bit and that could lead to a few sparks flying uh, over the next month but it's important that you do follow your heart in terms of being a freer spirit so that's what i feel that this new moon is about for you now gemini the new moon for you occurs in your second house of resources so it means that um, the position of uranus is in your 12th house of uh, secrets or things that you've yet to really process fully through, perhaps past events. So the second house can also be about our sense of worth. Are you in some way resisting new approaches, even though you're known as being someone with a, 
a very quick take on situations, but are you a little bit more embedded in some patterns and some ideals and some belief systems than perhaps you're appreciating? Because with mighty Saturn opposing Venus and Mars, however charming you try to be in terms of getting your ideas across, if you are a bit stuck and you're actually holding back from trying some new approaches, it could actually impact on that opportunity to grow your sense of, of self-worth but also crucially to improve your financial position as well. So I would say stay as open-minded as possible to the changes going on deep within you and in society generally in terms of how you toggle to take advantage because there could be part of you that may be a bit stubborn and a bit resistant to go in with the flow, which sounds a bit counterintuitive for you, but I think it could show itself over this next month. Now, Cancer, for you, this, of course, is a glorious opportunity in the astral calendar to really give yourself a, a platform to launch forwards with fresh energy, revitalization. You may feel that your physical... Uh, uh, your physical drive improves with the help of this particular event. But also, it's suggesting with Uranus's help that people who are different or fresh approaches or going in a different direction from something that you had been working towards perhaps for quite some time and you may have got there and it's not that it's ended up being an empty victory, it's been very valuable, it's just that you've altered along the journey and now it may be that you need to set new objectives. So if you do find yourself uh, rethinking some of your approaches, even if there has to be some short-term financial pain over the next month in order to follow your heart, then I think that that is a chance for you to revitalize, refresh, or to give an ongoing strand that is still important to you extra impetus. This would also be a fabulous time for you to give yourself some kind of uh, glamorous makeover. Uh, because the new moon gives you a chance to re-visualize, re-emphasize what makes you individual. So have maximum confidence in striding forwards in your own image, rather than being so worried about how other people might view you, which you may not have any worry about that at all. But security is often important to you. But this chart is suggesting that you may have to give up a little bit of fiscal and financial security to really follow your heart. Now, Leo, because for you, the uh, new moon is in your 12th house, this is probably one of the most sensitive of all the new moons of the whole year. The 12th house is about the things that we don't necessarily fully understand or are not fully integrated. Or there could be the shadow side of our nature, or it could be people around us that are not entirely on our side. So over the next month, some opposition could come up for you, I feel, and it could be in your work situation. You may have to uh, come to terms with the fact that someone may not have entirely your best interests at heart. But that doesn't mean to say you can't wow people with your charisma because with Venus and Mars together in your sign in such a magical way, yes, they are opposed by Saturn. So it just means you need to be very clear about what you're trying to achieve, but also understand the psychological dimension, the politics in any situation before you go forwards with your idea, your personality. If you really have it clear, then you can overcome the more uh, resistant energy of Saturn, but you just need that clarity. Now for you, Virgo, the uh, new moon's in the part of your horoscope to do with your future, to do with your friendships, and it's to do with your highest hopes. But Uranus is in a very free-spirited part of your situation. So fresh new people, people who look at things different to you, can actually be like a breath of fresh air. But if you're someone who tends to be a bit resistant to people you don't know, with Venus and Mars together in your 12th house, there may be a need for you to play a little bit safety first, even if this particular event in some ways is saying being much more uh, uh, much more free-spirited and also because Saturn's in your sector of health and work and structure if you are trying something that's new and different 
there's only a certain amount of your physical and emotional and psychological energy you can invest in that before you get a little bit worn out. So definitely a new moon to feel very optimistic, but also to stay very aware of how much energy anything new you're uh, doing is going to use up, whether that is in a more spiritual dimension or in a more practical way. Now Libra, for you, the new moon is in your sector of success. And like your sign, the sign of cancer is cardinal, which is about leadership, initiation. You have a reputation for diplomacy, and certainly with your ruler Venus combining with Mars in your sector of friendship, it definitely can be a case of who, as much as what you know, over the next month. But Saturn is applying the break to your ruler, and obviously because uh, he is also squaring up with Uranus as well as opposing Venus and Mars. I think your creative flushes uh, need to be well thought through, particularly financially, Uranus in your eighth house. But certainly aim high. Think of yourself, do your visualizations in positions of influence, in positions of power, in position of authority and success. And that can help to bring it through for you. I just feel that when it comes to uh, interacting with the group, just watch out for someone around you who might be a little bit jealous. Now, Scorpio, this new moon occurs in your sector of travel, expansion, adventure, new, new horizons. And of course, after the lockdown with COVID, what many of us crave for is a change of scene. And if you do have an opportunity to do something that is fresh and different over the next month, then I think this new moon can certainly help you. Particularly if you can do it with someone else, so you can work on a collective basis with somebody. But with Venus and Mars right at the top of your horoscope, it wouldn't surprise me if the change that you're thinking of making is somehow or another around your work or life role. Now, Sagittarius, this new moon is in the eighth solar house, which is about transformations. In a more prosaic sense, it can be about uh, anything to do with insurances, investments, property, uh, shared assets. But in an emotional uh, way, it's about releasing the things that are no longer working and letting them just fade away, but embracing a new way of being. So it can be very deep, the eighth house. And because you have uh, Venus and Mars in the ninth house of new adventures and travel, it could be that your that innate desire you have to always be challenging yourself with new information or new situations can actually work its way into your life at a very deep level around a key relationship or around how you earn money, a business idea you have, or even around investments. Now Capricorn, the new moon for you is in your sector of relationships. So this next month is very much about where you feel that you can enrich uh, your experience. And that may mean through somebody new coming into your world. So if you're single, having Uranus in your fifth house, connecting very well to the sun and the moon in your seventh house of relating is a, is a lovely combination. There is no question about that. But having Venus and Mars in your eighth house is very sexy. So if you forge a link to someone new at this time, the chances are they will have something very charismatic or magnetic about their nature that you can be strongly drawn towards. Now, because Uranus is in a very positive angle to the sun and the moon, someone different, could be very uplifting to you. But if you're in a long-term relationship where you feel closed in and it's, you know, you don't feel that you get much space to breathe, it's rather possessive or controlling, then I think it's possible that over the next month you're going to want to reform that relationship so it's working in a much better way. And that may mean that you both get out and do some things for yourselves. You know, the lockdown has been very positive in some ways and very challenging in others. So people have had to spend a lot of time with those people where maybe work or other interests would normally have been uh, things that just kept the flow of energy going between you. If you have been feeling a kind of pent up limitation 
or feeling that you can't quite be yourself I think this new movement is, is saying look there needs to be some new ways of operating between you in order to freshen things up or perhaps there does need to be a change which would of course be your decision now Aquarius the new moon for you occurs in your sector of work, health, fitness, diet, life organisation and Uranus in the fourth house is home. So it really points towards some reforms at home. Uh, but if you can find some new ways of learning more about what you eat and drink, that would be a great thing to do. And having Venus and Mars in your seventh house suggests you could collaborate with someone in a business situation or a job. So collaboration, something you have a talent for, can be a real positive theme over the next month. What's the role of Saturn? Well, it depends how close it is to any uh, key planets in your nativity. I mean, if it's very, very tight to them, perhaps you're going to think very carefully about who you make connections with because you're going to perhaps be a little shyer, but a little bit more cautious. But Venus and Mars are calling out to you to perhaps try something different. And, and, you know, trying something different, you have a reputation of being innovative. But really, in reality, Aquarians often stick with what they know. So this particular event is pushing you and me to be a little bit more flexible. And that brings us to Pisces, never last, uh, always last, sorry, but never least. And for you, just to say that Jupiter, I haven't explained this more broadly to others, it is in retrograde in your sign, but it is forging a broad, uh, a broad trine with uh, Mercury. It's a disassociate trine, so Mercury is not quite in Cancer. Uh, that happens, I think, on the 11th of July. So tomorrow, Mercury is going to move into Cancer, the day after this uh, uh, event. And then it will be forging a perfect trine to uh, your ruler, Jupiter. And that's terrific if you want to flow and explore things. It is true that Neptune in your sign is, on this particular event, still just about in touch with Mercury in a square, which is dominated all through this week, week commencing the 5th of July, which has uh, created uh, some limitation in energy, uh, some feeling of confusion at times. But I feel that obviously the moon and the sun in your fifth house is about self-expression, it's about joy, it's about romance, happiness. And Uranus is just saying, Look, try different things, be very open-minded. Having Venus and Mars in your sixth house suggests that it could be someone in a very practical location, perhaps through your work, supermarket queue, a bus stop, that kind of stuff that you could have a kind of flash of attraction to. But Saturn in the twelfth house, for you, does say that whatever you try, whoever you're drawn towards, you need to check out whether it feels right for you at a deeper emotional level. So that concludes the Cancer New Moon broadcast, both in terms of the event and the 12 zodiac sign forecast. Please check out my special offer, 30% off on your 12 month forecast and character analysis. But for now, stay safe, take care and goodbye.